The Feast of the Sacrifice, which honors the willingness of Ibrahim to sacrifice his son Ishmael in obedience to Allah's command, is observed with prayers said for peace, unity, and cleansing from the coronavirus pandemic. The revised Treaty of the Economic Community of Central African States takes effect from August 28, 2020, a major resolution taken during the 17th Summit of Heads of State and Heads of Government. A prolific captain of the indomitable lion, Stephen Tato Eta, bows out at 57 in Yaoundé after an illness, leaving his family and friends in consternation. His legacy with the team is revisited on the 730 News as we pay him homage. Good evening and thanks for joining us. Those were the headlines of the 730 News. Each of us must comply with the measures that have been taken. Muslims celebrate the Feast of the Sacrifice today, which symbolizes Ibrahim's willingness to sacrifice his son Ismail as an act of obedience to God's command. At the central mosque in the Brikatari neighborhood of Yaoundé, the faithful joined the senior Imam Muhammad Sanimu to implore God's grace for peace, unity and security in Cameroon. Constantine Baum has the details. The Feast of Sacrifice is the most important feast in the Muslim calendar a feast that dates from the historic event when Prophet Abraham was commanded by God in a form of a dream vision to sacrifice his son, Ismail. Abraham submitted to God and God provided a ram for him to sacrifice instead of his son. This prayer session at the Yaoundé Central Mosque at Brikitiri highlighted this willingness to sacrifice everything for God. The man act to do is to sacrifice. The Muslim faithful were called upon to keep praying for peace and security in Cameroon. He uh, uh, asked the Almighty uh, to uh, help us uh, to strengthen the peace in our country because without peace we cannot do anything. After this public prayer session, they returned home for the slaughtering of the ram, a cow, sheep, goat, or other livestock which becomes the basis for the feast and celebration with family and friends. The Eid al-Adha, which is the second of two Islamic holidays celebrated worldwide each year, was an occasion for the Muslim faithful to be challenged to obey God unconditionally. At the Yaoundé Min Mosque, Imam Sangu Musa reminded them of the obligations towards Allah and the sacrifice of the ram is a recommendation in the Holy Quran. Kilian Dandifun reports. Prayer to Allah and sacrifice in the image of Ibrahim, who obeyed God's order to offer his son, was characteristic at the second main mosque, Brekteri Yaoundé, within the context of COVID-19. Every Muslim is called upon to sacrifice. 14 centuries and 41 years ago, God's messenger Muhammad talked about how to behave in a context of a pandemic or a similar mishap. In the present context, Muslims have to celebrate in their homes. That was the main message well digested by the faithful in attendance. Our grand imam called upon all the Cameroonians to respect all the measures taken by the government concerning the fight against COVID-19. The faithful who took part in the brief prayer of the Feast of Tabaski in their majority wore protective face masks. For the Muslims who turned out at the Today Mosque in Yaoundé for the feast, they were urged to be examples of faith and to show love for one another. The prayers for peace and protection were said by Imam Abu Bakr Abdullah and followed by the emolution of the ram. Lou Muslim Davies tells us more. The Etudi Mosque recorded a full house as Muslim faithful gathered to give thanks to Allah and ask for his continuous mercy. It's a message of hope that shows that after every bad moment, like there's a day and there's a night, the day will come after the night and also the hope will come after the, the storm. 
It was also an occasion to sensitize the Muslim faithful on the coronavirus pandemic. We have to continue in this way uh, to observe uh, uh, barrier, uh, barrier measures. It's a day of hope and we hope of a, of a good tomorrow. The Muslim faithful felt elevated spiritually after the prayer session. It's a great day for all Muslims. We engage to pray Allah all the days to save us. A ram was slaughtered by the Imam in remembrance of Abraham's loyalty to Allah. In the littoral West and Northwest regions, the Muslim spiritual leaders prayed for the elimination of the global health crisis, the coronavirus. Imams Musa Shwaibu and Arun Abdullahi enjoined the faithful to keep in mind COVID-19 barrier measures as they celebrate the Feast of Tabaski. Details in this joint reports by Ngu Henry Tersambe, Julius Niba and Roslyn Fossa. The Lissipasi into the mosque was first the wearing of face masks, followed by the washing of hands. These positions taken for a feast of Tabaski, void of the coronavirus disease, which was also the main point of prayers to mark the celebration. The Grand Imam of the Grand Central Mosque, Sheikh Muhammad Malik Farouk, said the coronavirus pandemic is the result of Allah's anger towards evil, which has taken over goodness in the world. The climax of the celebration was the immolation of the ram while pleading Allah to accept just sacrifice. Muslim faithful in Bafusam converged on their respective prayer grounds as early as 7.30 a.m. for the special session to mark the feast of Tabaski. We have uh, sacrificed our ram as the Almighty Allah have orders us to do. We have um, uh, calls for the fellow uh, Muslims to uh, uh, try to respect the major barrier. was marked by the slaughtering of this ram with a call on the followers of Muhammad to emulate the example of Ibrahim. The old town neighborhood was jam-packed with Muslim faithful of all ages and sects who came to partake in the blessings bestowed on them as a result of Ibrahim's ram sacrifice. Respect the social distance, to put off their, their masks. They have come to pray for our family, for all the situation that our country is facing today. The Muslim faithful clad in their best outfits then continue the feast of Tabaski in their respective homes. In the East region, beyond imploring God for his peace upon the nation, Imam El Hajumaru preached on the need to check the spread of the coronavirus. A similar call was made in Boya by Imam Alaji Muhammad Abubakar, who requested enjoining good and forbidding evil. Details with Yvonne Isamengowo, Tala LT, and Ellis Wajibangia, who reports on the prayer said by Muhammadu Hayatu Isa in Gaundere. One of the conditions to get access to the Beto Central Mosque for the Feast of Tabaski prayers was the obligatory wearing of face mask by all. After saying the day's prayers, the Imam of the Central Mosque, El Haj Umaru Muhammadu, in his sermon to the mammoth crowd of faithful, reiterated the need for them to respect the anti COVID 19 guidelines put in place. In the presence of East Governor Gregor Vongo and other administrative authorities, the symbolic Tabaski ram was slaughtered as a sacrifice to Allah by the Imam of the Central Mosque. At the Boya Islamic Complex Central Mosque, the prayer was presided over by the Chief Imam of Boya, Al Haji Mohammed Abu Bakr. Abraham taught us a legacy. He gave us a legacy of perseverance, legacy of tolerance, legacy of obedience. The symbolic slaughtering of the ram, which signifies sacrifice and obedience, graced the morning prayers in Boya. Preachings and prayers to mark this year's celebration of the Tabaski Feast lasted for just about 15 minutes in all 94 mosques selected to host Muslim faithful in Gaoundiri. The Lamido urged every family head to ensure the strict respect of barrier measures against this coronavirus. The illness is still with us and we have to do everything possible to stop it by respecting the measures we know. As a sign of total submission to the Almighty, the Lamido of Ngaoundere, His Majesty Muhammadu Hayatu Isa, solemnly slaughtered a ram. 
Let's now get the pulse of the celebration of the Feast of Tabaski in the North Regional Capital, Garoa, in the Far North and also in the South Region. Imams of these regions prayed for peace and security to reign in Cameroon and called for the respect of hygiene measures to curb the spread of the coronavirus. Details with Wilson Mengole, Clarence Aze and Henry Tato Ikambi. At the Pum Pum a prayer ground in Garoa, Muslim faithful, wearing face masks and maintaining physical distance, raised their voices to Allah for sustainable peace to reign in Cameroon. The Lamido of Garoa, His Majesty Alim Gaga Hayatu, used the occasion to call on notables and quarter heads to step up the fight against insecurity and the coronavirus. The main Imam of Garwa, Modibo Jafaru, exhorted the faithful to avoid sin, shun social ease, and live according to the prescriptions of Allah. The coronavirus came because we have pushed God aside, so we should return to Allah with humility and things will come back to normal. Those were the words of Modibo Bubadaru as he delivered his Tabaski message at the Lamidan Mosque in Marua. The Lamido of Marua, on his part, stressed on some ills he would love the brethren to discontinue. In a brief prayer session at the Central Mosque in Ebolova, Muslim faithful gather to commemorate the willingness of Ibrahim to follow Allah's command to sacrifice his son. The Imam in a short sermon exhorts the faithful to draw closer to Allah and submit to his will. A ram void of blemishes is slaughtered for the sacrifice and the faithful asked to go home and do same while remembering to share with the less privileged. The Muslim community in Mada in the far north region on their part have in prayers called for the return of peace in the far north, the northwest and the southwest regions. At a prayer led by the Lamido of Mada, the Right Honourable Kava Gibril, saving the population from the deadly coronavirus was a wish expressed, as we hear this report by Ayok John Ashu. Amid drum beats, the Mada kindred in Togumbere subdivision ushered in their traditional ruler, the right by Yege Jibril to the prayer ground for the Tabaski rituals. In his sermon, Imam Sali expounded on the symbolism of the sacrificial lamb, calling on his brethren to stick to the teachings of Prophet Muhammad and not to coin the holy scriptures to suit their selfish ambitions. The Muslim faithful of Mada, in their meditations, prayed for an end to the coronavirus and for peace and stability to reign in Cameroon. To set the stage for family heads to follow suit, a healthy ram was slaughtered by the imam. The celebration of the most important feast in Islam was an opportunity for the Lamido of Mada, the Right Honorable Kawayege Jibril, to communion with his kin and kin. In Fumban, where the Muslim faithful converged on mass to commemorate the Feast of Tabaski, Sultan Ibrahim Bombonjoya prescribed the respect of COVID-19 measures. He also used the occasion to decry human trafficking that is unfortunately excelling in the area. Amy Banda tells us more. Allah. All dressed in their finest clothing to perform the eye prayers at the Pirate's Peak, devotees prayed to Allah for mercy over the deaths caused by the invisible COVID-19 pandemic and the heartbreaking discoveries of human trafficking painting a dark image of the division. Sultan deeply emphasized on the fact of the traffic of uh, human uh, bones, uh, traffic of uh, drugs, which today is very shameful. The massive turnout of women, men and children delivered a message of devotion, kindness and equality. The main topic of the address of the Sultan was to thank very heartily the government for all the measures to enable us to open the churches and the mosque today. The 19th Sultan of the Charian dynasty exchanged greetings and gifts with his people at the end of the Eid prayers. The celebration of the Feast of the Sacrifice went beyond prayers at mass and at homes. As a tradition, Muslim faithful are expected to share the sacrifice animal with family, friends, as well as the needy and the poor. In their own day, the effervescence was located as the faithful were obliged to strictly respect anti-COVID-19 measures. Gerard Ayambe tells us more. This year's Muslim Feast of Sacrifice takes place within a peculiar context of the fight against COVID-19. Unlike in the past, when popular celebrations were rife, after prayer this time, faithful retired to feast at home. 
The celebration is going on very well, though not as it has always been going on. The message I got from the mosque today was specifically the fact that we as Muslims, we have to be the premium actors of this fight against the COVID-19 virus. Popular celebrations notwithstanding, faithful like this family had a hectic feast among themselves. And usually in the past, we used to have many guests. We are no more receiving guests, and this is notably due to the coronavirus pandemic. So we mostly receive only the family. Until the COVID-19 gives way, the new normal imposed by the pandemic takes precedence. The emulation of the ram is the very essence of the Feast of the Sacrifice. In obedience to the command of Allah, Ibrahim was ready to sacrifice his son, Ismail. But before the act, Allah provided a lamp instead. The emulation is thus a commemoration of this intervention where a lamb or a sheep is sacrificed. Ebenezer Akanga tells us more on this significance. Since the era of Prophet Muhammad, Muslims slaughter a ram every year on the occasion of the Feast of Sacrifice or Tabaski. The act is not a mere ritual. It evokes Abraham's trial in which he was ordered by God to sacrifice his most beloved possession, his son Ismail. Abraham would have slaughtered his son following God's command without question. But in the face of his sheer determination and strength of faith, God swapped Ismail with a ram and he slaughtered it instead. So the slaughtering of a ram symbolizes absolute faith and total submission of Abraham to Allah. Replacing Ismail with the ram also symbolizes the fact that only God has the absolute right to take the life of anyone. After the sacrifice, Muslims share meat with their relatives and the needy. This symbolizes God's vision of brotherly relations. On to one of our other top stories, the new revised treaty of the Economic Community of Central African States, ECAS, will come into force on August 28, 2020. This is one of the resolutions taken during the 17th summit of heads of state and heads of governments of ECAS, which held yesterday. Star Building correspondent Christian Chiatam comes back to some of the major resolutions of yesterday's session. The 17th Summit of Heads of State and Heads of Government of the Economic Community of Central African States marks a major milestone in the modernization of the organ as important decisions have been taken. ECA's Heads of State have decided that the new revised treaty of the organization will be implemented as from the 28th of August 2020. Eight out of the 11 member states have already ratified the revised treaty. The regional body has also set up a new bureau to manage the ECA's commission. The chairperson, Gilberto Dapieldade Verissimo, is from Angola, while the deputy chair is Equator Guinean born Tashundu Belope Francesca. Kanimimba Francois from Rwanda will lead the Economic Affairs Commission. The Environment and Agriculture Commission will be headed by Tabuna Onuri from the Republic of Congo, while a Cameroonian, Ngako Marie Therese Chantal Fulan Jomo, leads the Commission on Infrastructure. Two other commissioners, yet to be designated by the Republic of Chad and the Democratic Republic of Congo, will complete the Bureau of seven members. The new team is expected to spearhead the development and integration efforts once the ratified ECAS Treaty comes into force. The new Bureau has been instructed to accelerate the putting in place of other organs of the ECAS Commission. The next ECAS Summit will take place in November 2021 in Libreville, Gabon. In order to foster integration in the economic community, an aviation academy in the Central African sub-region will be created. Member states are also expected to work in synergy to address the coronavirus menace. Carolino Kianoma now highlights some of the actions envisaged to strengthen cooperation in ECAS. The Economic Community of Central African States, made up of 11 member states of which Cameroon is part of, is one of the least advanced sub-regions in terms of regional integration. Conscious of that, the just-ended 17th Ordinary Session of the Conference of Heads of State and Government adopted the following decisions to spearhead the development and integration process of ACAS. A newly appointed bureau made up of a chairperson, vice chair, and five commissioners of which Cameroon will lead the Infrastructure Commission. They are expected to accelerate other organs of ACAS, notably the Economic and Agriculture Commission. 
the Treaty of the Organization becomes effective as of August 28, 2020. Other decisions taken during the video conference were the creation of an aviation academy in Central Africa, the putting in place of a unified approach against COVID-19, a pacific resolution of the conflicts generated over the shared waters, and last but not least, the endorsement of the Rwandan candidate for the position of judge in the International Court of Justice. The next ACAS Heads of State and Government Summit will be in November 20, 2021, with the new system of rotation of chairpersons put in place. It is 7.51 p.m. and public health experts are calling on parents and their children to respect anti-COVID-19 barrier measures during these holidays so as to limit the spread of COVID-19 in the country. They prescribe the regular washing of hands and the wearing of face masks for parents and their children. Borden Sama is standing by at the Public Health Emergency Operations Center with updates. His guest is Dr. Eric Tandy. Hello, Baldwin. Good evening to you, Esther Kim, and welcome to the Public Health Emergency Operations Center. Indeed, it remains a delicate period for parents and their children these holidays, given that uh, their children are exposed to the coronavirus. They will spend several hours at home playing alongside their neighbors and equally other visitors. Uh, they torture many toys, and that's why public health experts are calling on them to disinfect their hands and equally disinfect these toys that they use at home regularly in order to limit the spread of COVID-19. And that is what we shall be discussing with uh, Dr. Eric Tanzi, a public health expert. Good evening, doctor. Yeah, good evening, buddy. What do parents and children need to know in order to avoid being infected with COVID-19 during these holidays? Yeah, a little bit away from playing at home, we've noticed that a lot of parents have sent their kids out for hawking, you know, or business purposes, which is not advised, you know. Uh, if they have to even stay at home, they should respect physical distancing. So we're just calling that parents should take these barrier measures very serious so that uh, we should keep this issue out of our system. Because remember, the median age is among youths as far as COVID-19 is concerned. And if parents take chances, the kids might infect them more. So we have to be very careful as far as this is concerned. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Dr. Eric Tanzi. And if parents and the children watching us this evening respect all these barrier measures, then together as one family, we must have uh, played our own role to limit the spread of COVID-19. Back to you, Esther Kiba. Thank you very much, Borden Summer. Respecting the prescriptions of the World Health Organization as well as that of government is primordial in checking the spread of the coronavirus in Cameroon. Now on to one of our top stories and on a sad note, the former captain of Cameroon's indomitable lion, Stephen Tato Eta, has died after an illness. Stephen Eta Tato captained the indomitable lions to their memorable World Cup campaign in Italy in 1980. Before going to the Public Health Emergency Center, Baldwin Summer visited the residents of the diseased at the Dragash neighborhood in Yaoundé today and now pens a picture of the mood that prevailed there. An emotional hug between late Stephen Tato's daughter and sister, a hug that tells the pain felt by two loved ones of the deceased. An atmosphere of mourning prevailed at the deceased residence Friday afternoon shortly after his death at midday. The former captain of Cameroon's indomitable lions has been battling between life and death for a while. He has been sick for some time, on, off, on, off. And uh, yesterday the situation got worse. And uh, he died today at midday. At this quick life he lived, even with his two children, who remained unconsolable, losing their dad. My father was someone great. I'm not talking about what he was doing outside. Not about his profession, I'm talking about as a dad. Daddy was a great person, always there for me. I'm a junior brother since the death of mommy. Stephen Tato was part of Cameroon squad and led the team to their 1990 World Cup campaign in Italy. He had over 63 caps with three goals and as he quits the stage never to return again, leaving behind his children and the sports family to mourn him. His memory lives with us.
Of course, the lion is gone, but he keeps living. Now on to foreign news. President Donald Trump's proposal to delay this year's American elections has been pushed back by the key leaders of the two dominant parties in the United States Congress. In a tweet yesterday, the president suggested a delay to avoid mail-in votes, which he believes will increase fraud. Charles Ibonet now looks at the constitutionality of election delay in America. July 30 this year, the entire American nation pays last respects to deceased civil rights law. John Lewis always looked outward. He kept moving. America was built by John Lewis's. On the same day of national mourning, President Donald Trump, through a tweet, gesticulates on the possibility to delay this year's elections. There are several elections on one day. And so the American president, by law, by the Constitution, has neither the constitutional power nor the prerogative, not to talk of the political power, to alter, to delay, or to stop the elections. According to the founding fathers of the American political experiment, it is simply an impossible constitutional tax for the president. The challenge posed by the coronavirus pandemic is real but out of voting bounds. Every Tuesday of the first Monday of November of every four years, in the, in the, in the case of 2020, November 3. So the American president has no way. The floated idea to modify the American electoral calendar has been pushed back by the leadership of both sides of the political divide. And that report brings us to the end of the 7.30 news. But before we go, a recap of our major stories. The Feast of the Sacrifice, which honors the willingness of Ibrahim to sacrifice his son Ismail in obedience to Allah's command has been observed with prayers said for peace, unity and cleansing from the coronavirus pandemic. The revised Treaty of the Economic Community of Central African States takes effect from August 28, 2020, a major resolution taken during the 17th summit of heads of state and heads of government. And it's on that note that we wrap up this edition of the 730 News. Thanks for joining us at 8.30 p.m. Join Atabadine Omar. And as you celebrate the Feast of the Sacrifice, remember to protect yourself and also to protect others. Good night and thanks for watching. I'll be back tomorrow at 7.30 p.m. God willing. In this connection, we should avoid stigmatizing.